Hi there, this is Ayush and welcome you to this master class series on bearing. And this is an introduction video of this series. In this video, I just want to share the road map of this complete series. Also, a general awareness of the bearing studies. That what are the important terms and calculation we should know and master as a design engineer. And here is my promise. This complete bearing series is direct applicable series for every mechanical design engineer. I don't know how many videos will be take to complete this series, but in this series we will learn almost all type of bearings used in machine design like ball bearings, roller bearings, self alignment bearings like spherical roller bearing, curved toroidal roller bearing, all three types of angular contact bearing, thrust bearing, taper roller bearing, also different type of bushings. Our main motive and focus is not only knowing the type of the bearing and their construction, it's pretty much self-explanatory. With the name itself, our main focus is to master the selection of bearing, that how to choose the right type of bearings as per the application, as per the loading condition, and as per the amount of load and speed. Yes my friend, each bearings has their own speed limitation, mechanical speed limitations as well as thermal speed limitation. But the selection of bearing is not only about selecting the right type of bearing. Bearing selection is also about the selected bearing should meet their expected service life. So we will master the bearing service life calculation. Also we have to learn the selection of bearing lubrication, lubrication type and calculation of right amount of lubrication for a bearing. And as per the designer point of view we have to also master the bearing mounting that how to determine the right amount of tolerance of our bearing shaft and bearing hosing for different bearings. And I am telling you there is no thumb rule. There are many factors that decide the tolerance of our bearing seats like bearing precision grade means in which tolerance bearing manufactured itself also in relative motion that which part of bearing is moving and which part of bearing is stationary and selection of right fit of a bearing is very important because the bearing fits tolerance directly impacts the bearing life so again we have to master these all factors and there is one more thing which make us confused that there is no one bearing for a one particular application. There are multiples options of a bearing for a same application. Like in the same radial motion application, we can use a simple deep groove ball bearing or we can also use a angular contact bearing or we can also use the roller bearings. Also there is single groove ball bearing and also double groove ball bearing. Also in angular contact bearing. We can use the pairs of angular contact bearing or we can also use the four contact angular contact bearing. So we will also try to understand that how to compare the bearings and select the best suitable bearing. And later in this series, we will also master the different type of bearing blocks. But the standard commercial bearing blocks are usually not available for high speed application, speeds like more than 12,000 rpm. So later in this series, we will also design a high speed bearing blocks, a speed for 20,000 rpm. And to make this difficult, we will design an angular contact bearing block, where we will deeply understand the angular contact bearings and their arrangement, like back to back arrangement, face to face arrangement or tandem arrangement and how to decide that which bearing arrangement is better for which application. And then we will come to know the very critical things like why the bearing run-in procedure is important and how to do it. Second, the critical rule of doing preloading of the bearing and how to do it in the design. And third, the importance of bearing lubrication. That's how the lubrication works inside the bearing. I'm telling you this is so fascinating and these things only few engineers know, those who have experience in high speed bearing block design and I am the one. But if you are a beginner and wondering, is that really necessary to know as much about the bearing? So here is a pro tip, for interviews you just have to know the overviews of all those things like type of the bearing, nomenclature of the bearing or maybe interviewer can ask you the what is the best suitable bearings for our application 
and you will pass the interview anyway. But when it comes to design something critical, as a individual designers, it really takes the in-depth understanding of everything. And we realize the importance of these things when we design something critical and it fails. I don't know when you failed or never failed in design something, but here is a thing. When our design fails, no one will hesitate to give you the suggestions as per their own experience and understanding and sometimes even without the complete understanding of your design. And in pressure situations, we hurt from everyone and we make the wrong decisions. And then only our deep knowledge and experience comes to rescue us. And this series may take one or two months to complete, I don't know. So I don't want to bore you with only pairing content. So maybe in between we will take some break and start GDNT series also. Or maybe we will try to do this in parallel if it would be possible. Because the GDNT is very important for bearing block design. Without GDNT we cannot design bearing block. And this time I will also try to avoid the mixing of multiple topics in a same video. Single topic, single video. But in some cases, if the topic will be long, the video will be also long. And here I want to mention your name for requesting this series. You all are amazing. So let's start from bearing origin, that how bearing invent and evolve in years in very interesting way. The history of the bearing. Video should be on your screen or you can also check the description. Thank you so much for the watching.